Hello crafty friends, it's Nikki with Stillwater's Wreath Designs and today we're going to make a spring bee wreath. Everything that you see in this video is actually available as a full and completed wreath kit in my Etsy shop. I'll leave that link in the description below in case you'd like to recreate this for your front door. All right friends, so we're going to be using a 15 inch work wreath frame. If you're not familiar with work wreath frames, um, when they come to you, they're completed and ready to go just like this. So they're 15 inches in diameter, and all of these ties are already attached to your work wreath frame, so it's ready to go. We're going to use a couple of different colors of 10 inch deco mesh. We've got four different wired ribbons that we'll be using. And of course, we've got the super cute Be Blessed sign. The first thing we need to do is get our deco mesh ready. Let me just point out real quickly, friends, your wreath frame has 18 ties in total. So we need 18 pieces of deco mesh. And since we're using two colors, that means we'll be cutting nine pieces of the black and white and nine pieces of the yellow. And if you're making this on your own, to cut this at 20 inches in length. So I'm going to go ahead and cut nine 20 inch pieces of the black and white and nine 20 inches pieces of the yellow. And then I'll meet you back here. I've got my deco mesh all cut and ready to load. And now it's time to add our deco mesh into our work wreath frame. So if you're not familiar with deco mesh friends, let me just show you um, what you need to do with each piece to load it into your tie. These are called ties. So you're just going to grab a piece of deco mesh. And what you're going to do is take your deco mesh. As you can see, it likes to curl in on itself. And you want that to be curl side down. And we're just going to make a cruffle first. I'm going to roll under the edge two times. That basically just tucks away that cut edge to prevent the fray. And then, using your fingers on both hands, you're just going to scrunch and gather, scrunch and gather your entire piece of deco mesh until you get to the last few inches. You're going to curl them under, pinch them together, and that creates what we call a cruffle. And the cruffle helps prevent the fray on your deco mesh. I typically start on the bottom rung. You can start on either the top or the bottom. And what you're going to do at this point, add one cruffle to every single tie, pressing that cruffle all the way down to the base, giving it two tight twists, and then moving on to the next one. Because we're using two different colors of deco mesh, I'm going to alternate back and forth between the yellow and the black and white check. So again, I'm going to lay my deco mesh flat, fold that edge under a couple of times to hide that cut edge, scrunch and gather, scrunch and gather, scrunch and gather, until you're nearly to the end, curl under that last bit a little of mesh until you've got a cruffle. Go ahead and add that to your next set of ties, pressing it all the way down to the center of that tie at the base and giving it a couple of tight twists. So at this point, friends, we're going to add in all of our deco mesh, making sure that you alternate between the two colors on both top and bottom layers, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, friends, at this point, there's no top or bottom to your wreath base. So our next step is to add our sign into the wreath base. First, I want you to take your ties on that upper level and just gently point them outwards so that they don't get trapped behind our sign. There we go. Now, you're just going to take your sign. If you've purchased a wreath kit from me from Intend To, your sign is going to come pre-drilled with a hole on each side. If you're using your own materials, just go ahead and drill a small hole on each side, or you could flip your sign over and either hot glue, super glue, 
or staple a Chanel stem on each side if you'd like to, uh, to attach it that way. So we're just going to find our first set of ties and you're gonna take one of those two ties and just poke it right through that hole to get that in the middle, three quarters of the way down. You don't wanna press it so deeply into your wreath that it sinks. And in order to keep your sign right in the middle, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got three sets of ties, one, two, three, and then that fourth set will be where you add it. So now your sign is right in the middle and you've got three sets of ties above it and you've got three sets of ties below it. And the next thing we need to do, friends, is get our ribbon ready to load into our wreath. If you've ordered a kit from me, this will come to you pre-cut and ready to load. If you're working with your own materials, go ahead and grab two different types of two and a half inch wired ribbon and two different types of one and a half inch ribbon so that we can cut our tails for our wreath. There are 18 sets of ties on this wreath base. Two of those sets of ties we're going to reserve for a bow. So that leaves us 16. And so for each of your ribbon types, all four of them, you're going to cut eight 10 inch pieces. I'm going to cut my ends at an angle. Make sure you don't overload your scissors, friends. If you try to cut more material than what your scissors want you to, it's gonna give you a jagged rough cut. I can actually comfortably cut three pieces um, with my scissors, so that's how many I do, but make sure you know your scissors. And to cut in an angle, our line will look just like this. So we're going to come down on one side about three quarters of an inch and just cut at a diagonal up to the opposite corner. Flip your stack over, make sure your ends all match up and do the exact same thing. Making sure that your angle cuts are both going the same direction. We'll continue this pattern through all four ribbon types, making sure that you're cutting eight pieces of each ribbon type at 10 inches in length, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, now we've got our ribbon all cut and ready to go. So it's time to add this into our wreath. So determine um, which you're going to pair with which. And what I mean by that is um, we are going to add two ribbon tails to each tie on our wreath base. And we're gonna start with the upper layer of our wreath base. And so the first thing we need to do is add two tails to the ties that have actually attached our sign. And I'm gonna choose um, this, this coordinating set here. And what you're gonna do is just lay one ribbon on top of the other just by eyeballing it, find your center. If you struggle with that, you can just fold it in half, unfold it, and then that line will show you the center. And you're gonna pinch and pleat, pinch and pleat, pinch and pleat, until you have what looks like a men's bow tie. Form that into a V, I just pull that down over my thumb, and add that into your ties. And so when you add that, you're just going to push it all the way down, give your ties two or three really tight twists. And then with your wire snips, you're gonna trim off that remaining bit of tie because we don't need that anymore and just throw that away. I always just grab those ties, friends, and kind of curl them curl them down a little bit, they can be somewhat pokey, and then fluff out your tails. And by fluff, I just pull that in a little bit better of a V shape, make sure they're kind of curling down. And I'm gonna put the exact same stack on the other side. So 
So the next step, friends, let me tell you here. I want you to be mindful of where we add in the other ribbon ties on to the top layer because in your upper left, the very next set of ties above where we tied the sign and below where we tied this, the sign on, I don't want you to add anything into either of these sets of ties because that's where we're gonna add a bow. So skipping these two, you're gonna do the same thing adding ribbon stacks into your ties. So I don't like the same thing to be next to one another. I like to alternate. So I'm gonna come over here. Since we use the, the bright yellow B and the black one and a half inch, we're gonna use the opposite for the neighboring. Toss those away. Curl that down under. And then fluff your tails out. Then next to that, I'll go back to that original yellow B with the black and white one and a half inch. Now, remember, we're gonna leave this set of ties alone. That's where we're going to add a bow in just a short bit. So we'll come back down to the bottom and move to the next set of ties. All right, friends, we've got all of our ties, excuse me, all of our tails added to the top with the exception of our bows. And so we're gonna do the exact same thing on the lower level. I just alternate back and forth between the two ribbon stack types. And remember, you're just gonna add two ribbon tails to each tie on that lower level all the way around. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll add the bows. Now that you've got all of your ribbon tails added in, it's looking fantastic, but we're still not done yet. First, I want you to flip over your wreath and you've got all this beautiful deco mesh underneath your sign and nobody can see it. Without being forceful, just gently push your deco mesh back underneath your sign so that it can be seen by you or your customer. There we go. Flip that back over. And you can see that made it much fuller on the front now that everything isn't squished below. So the next step is to add our bows. So I'm gonna have you put away or push off to the side here your wreath and pull your ribbons back out and we'll make our bows. So we're making two bows for our wreath. So to make it by hand, I'm just gonna pull myself out a good bit of ribbon. Determine how long you would like your tails to be. And I always make them a little bit on the longer side because you know you can trim it off but you can't add any on. And then you're gonna pinch that twist because you always want the pretty side out and make your loops the size that you would like to make them. I'm going to guess these to be, yep, they're about five inches. Twist again because see we want that pretty side out. Make another loop of the same size. And to determine if it's the right size, friends, you can just stick your hand in there and make sure that they hit at the same point. And then cut your ribbon off because we're done with that first layer. Now keep a hold of that in your hand. And we're going to move on to the next ribbon type. And I'm going to make my tails about two inches shorter than the previous tails because we want that to peek through. So lay that on top of your hand. Pinch and twist. Make your loop basically the same size or a tad smaller as your previous. Twist. Pinch and twist. Make sure those loops are about the same size. That one needs to be a tad longer. 
and wrap all your tail. And cut that off. Move on to your next ribbon type. We're basically making a bow with all four of the ribbons that we used. Right, add your tail. Give it a pinch and twist. Make your loop just a little bit smaller than your previous. Make another loop. Make sure they're the same size. Pull your tail down and cut that off. And we've got one more ribbon type. Friends, if you bought a wreath kit from me or if you're going to, um, the bow is going to come to you already assembled. It's not going to be fluffed out, but your ribbon stack will be made. It will be tied off and all you've got to do is fluff it out. So one more time, add your tail, give that a pinch, make your loop, same size as your yellows, twist, one more loop, and tail. And now you're going to take your pipe cleaner and just run that around your entire ribbon stack. Flip that over. Make sure everything's going in the right direction. Give that a super duper 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 tight tight twist. And then I just spin my entire bow stack. Five or six times so it's really super tight with that pipe cleaner. And it looks a bit of a hot mess, but you're going to fluff it out. And because we're adding it into this um, wreath, friends, we're not going to fluff it out until we get it in there. So it looks like a hot mess. It's kind of sloppy, but that's okay. That's what they look like at first. Go ahead and grab your snips or your scissors and trim off that excess bit of pipe cleaner. Kind of split that in the center. And... Open up those ties. You want to press it low enough that you get a secure fit, but not so low that your bow is sunk. So I've probably got, oh, an inch and a half of ties left at the top. Just give that two or three tight twists. Trim those dudes off. Just like before, fold that tie under. And now you've got all these ribbons hanging out up here. So you can fluff this out any way that you'd like. I'm just going to show you how I do it. And then you can, you know, tweak your recipe based on how you would like to do it. So I'm just going to fluff. I'm pulling the big ones apart in an X. And then the little ones apart in an X and because these are wired they'll hold their shape and then I'm gonna cut things at an angle just like we did our ribbon stack basically I like different layers and I don't like my sign to be covered so that's basically how I determine where I'm gonna make my cuts if you're not sure about how you want your tails to hang, I always like to encourage folks to just cut off a little bit at a time. You can always trim more off later, but you sure can't put it back on. If you watched any of my videos, you've heard me say that lots and lots and lots of times. We'll give that a final fluff. Once we're done, we may need to trim a little bit more off because it's wanting to cover our sign, which we sure don't want. The rough fluff, as I like to call it, is looking awesome. Go ahead and repeat the same process making an identical bow for the lower right hand section and I'll meet you back here. All right grab your wreath base and bring that back in. Take your bow stack that we just made, find that set of ties, make sure your tails and loops are going the right direction 
and add that bow right down in there. Tighten those ties up two or three times really tightly. Trim off those excess bits and then curl that down under and out of the way. And just like we did with the upper bow, we're going to fluff out our lower bow and trim our tails. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. I'm going to grab some florals or greenery or embellishments. I haven't decided yet. And I'll meet you back here. All right, friends, at this point, any of the embellishments or greenery that we add, if you purchased a wreath kit, does not come with your kit. That's something you'll have to grab on your own and add it in as you wish. I've had this leftover black, white, and yellow pom-pom pick um, actually since last year, and I think we're going to play around with this and see what we think about it in this wreath. If you've never worked with a pom-pom pick, they're very versatile because you can really mold them how you want. So let me show you what I mean. This one, I mean, you can totally straighten it out. You can curl it up. They're very moldable. So that center wire is stiff yet flexible. So you can really tweak it and you can even make a little corkscrew if you wanted. So it's very versatile. And I'm trying to decide where I want to place these. So give me just a moment while I poke around here. All right, friends, I've decided I'm going to use two of the three that I had. I've turned them into corkscrews. And you're going to have to leave your bottom a couple of inches somewhat straight so that we can glue that guy and add it down into our spots. I'm going to add them here and here. And so what I'm going to do is on the back side, run a good bead of glue on that stick as well as the back side of those pom poms. Just that lower palm to really make sure we get a good stick. Once that dries, then if you need to recurl your pom-pom curl, you can sure do so. Those are so stinking cute. Second pom-pom, make sure you're running that glue on the back side of your picks or your florals. Now we're gonna add some greenery picks. So I chose this particular greenery bush because I like a little bit of green in there just to really show that springy color but but this particular choice has got a lot of pale yellow blended in with it as well but I feel like it'll be really complementary with our wreath and so if you've not worked with a lot of florals or greenery this is called a bush and then each additional piece is called a stem and so what I'm going to do friends is trim off looks like there's probably seven or eight I'm going to trim off each of these stems so that we can add them in. We'll see what we think. Now, most of the time, I would say 98% of the time when you're working with either florals or greenery, these pieces will slide. So you can see here, but there's actually multiple layers to this particular stem and you can push these guys up so that they're positioned where you want them to be. Okay, so I like to slide things around. I like them a little bit fuller at the top. So I've got lots of variegated textures and layers. That leaves us with probably a two and a half inch stem, which is more than what we need. You only need about an inch, inch and a half. So then we're gonna trim it off again because we don't need it to be that long. And then that will leave you with all of your greenery pushed up to where we like it and then about an inch and a quarter of stem. So go ahead and trim and prep all of your pieces here with your snips and then we'll get those babies glued down in. So before we glue these in friends, you know me, I like to dry place things first. And so I'm just going to work my way around. I'm going to keep the longer pieces towards the back so I make sure that I'm always seeing these yellow bits. And I'm just going to dry run 
replace these guys. And we may find that we may need to snip a little bit more off. I'm not sure. We'll see how this comes together. I had just the right amount, one stem and added it, <clears throat> or laid it, I should say, in the center of each ribbon tail stack on the lower level of our wreath. And I really like the way that's looking. So now that I have those in place, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them in. So you're just gonna pull out your piece. You're gonna run your glue on the back side of that stem. Let me scoot this in, make sure you can see. Right along that stem. And give it five seconds of a good press right near where the V of those ribbon tails are and then move along to your next one. I may be keeping this for myself. All right, friends, we've got that one last little pick here that we are going to, I think we're gonna go ahead and add it near our bow. We can trim some of this excess off. And I think we're gonna add it right near the center of this bow. All right, friends, our wreath is totally done. You can just fluff out your tails a little bit, make sure everything is hanging where you would like. Get it with anything a trim that you feel like is a tad too long. And this beauty is finished. Okay, let's move on to our next design. Our second bee spring wreath design is going to be on a pine base. All right, let's dive in. We'll be making this wreath on an 18 inch round pine base. The first thing we need to do is fluff out the pine ties on our base. So all we're going to do is stand them at attention and wake them up a bit. Next, you'll need two rolls of 10 inch deco mesh, one in a shade of yellow and one in a black and white buffalo check. The number of pieces of each will vary depending on how closely you place them in your pine base. I'm going to start out with seven pieces of each color, so I'm just pulling that deco mesh straight up in the air. My arm's at a 90 degree angle and I'm cutting. As you can see, I don't bother measuring. These pieces will be between 20 and 24 inches in length. Once you've got your deco mesh pieces cut and ready to go, it's time to stuff them into the pine base. To make your cruffles, just grab a piece of deco mesh, lay them in your work area curl side up. You're going to roll in each end of your deco mesh piece to tuck away that raw edge and then ruffle in the middle. This is what we call a cruffle. Once you've got your cruffle made, we'll then stuff that into the pine base. All we're going to do is find two neighboring pine ties. We'll open those pine ties up a little bit, stuff that cruffle right down between those ties and give those ties a couple of tight, tight twists. We'll be adding a ring of cruffles on the inner ring and one on the outer ring. Let's do one more together and then we'll speed ahead. We'll be alternating back and forth between the two colors. So I've grabbed a piece of the yellow deco mesh. It's laying in my work area curl side up. I'm going to roll in each end to tuck away that raw edge and then ruffle in the middle. Now we can grab our pine base and right next to the original cruffle, we're going to find two neighboring pine ties. Add that cruffle between those two ties and give them a couple of tight twists. We'll repeat the same process all the way around our pine base. You may need to cut some more pieces, that's totally fine. Add as many as you wish and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, now that our pine base is totally full of cruffles, it's time to move on to the next step. I'm going to make a bow for our wreath with some wired ribbon using the bow dabra. I'll be speeding ahead through this part. However, I will leave a couple of tutorials for you below in the description of this video if you need some additional assistance on how to make a bow. You guys, it took me a long time to learn how to make a bow. I relied on the bow dabra for the first year of my wreath making process. I'll leave a link for this handy tool for you as well. Let's go ahead and get our bow attached to our wreath. I'm going to use a 20 gauge floral wire stem to anchor the bow into the wreath. Just take your floral wire stem and fold it into a V to find that center point. Then grab your bow 
and your floral wire stem. Wrap the floral wire stem right around the center of your bow stack. Give it a couple of tight twists to give it some security. And then we're going to poke it right through the pine base of our wreath and attach it on the back. That is looking adorable. Those tails are a little long. I like to leave them there until we get our other embellishments added in, and then we can determine how to best trim those tails. Let's take a quick minute to do a rough fluff of our bow. I'm just gonna separate those loops into an X and open them up. Okay, let's move on to the next step. We're gonna add in this super cute Welcome to Our Hive metal sign because it's metal and has a couple of pre-drilled holes. I'm just going to use some floral wire stems and run them through those pre-drilled holes and anchor the sign down in the right-hand side on the bottom quadrant. If your sign is wood, I would recommend that you hot glue some mounting brackets to the back of your sign and then run those floral wire stems through the mounting brackets. I'm gonna leave a link for those below. Just run those floral wire stems right through the pine base and anchor them down on the back side, just like we did the bow. Be sure to grab your needle nose pliers and curl those ends under so that they don't poke your door. Once you've got your sign attached, it's time to add some florals. I've grabbed some greenery and a variety of different yellow themed florals. I've grabbed my Large Work Pro snips and I'm going to trim off several of the stems from the floral bush. I'm going to push the greenery up towards the top of the floral and then trim down my stem so that it's a couple of inches long, which is just the right length to anchor it down into the pine base. Once your florals are trimmed and ready to go, I like to dry place them all around the wreath base first and then I'll come back through and glue them in. Make sure you variate the different textures and colors so that you have a beautiful variety throughout the wreath. Now that I've added the florals in, but before I glue them down, I've decided that we need some ribbon tails in the bottom right hand corner, catty corner from our bow to really add some pop. So I've just cut an 18 inch strip of the black and white two and a half inch ribbon. Now I'll cut a 16 inch strip of the two and a half inch B ribbon and a 14 inch strip of the yellow and white stripe. We'll layer them on top of one another with the one and a half inch on top. We'll pleat and fold them in the center, and we're going to anchor them down into two pine tithes. Once you have those ribbon tails anchored down, grab your scissors and angle trim the ends of each ribbon strip. Perfect, that's just the pop of color that our wreath needed. Okay, let's go ahead and add some more florals, and then we'll glue them in. All right, it's time for the last step. We need a little bit of greenery pop throughout the wreath. So I've grabbed a dainty frosted greenery bush from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to trim off half the bush. We'll dry place them into our wreath and then glue them in. Okay, the greenery bits are all glued in and I just remembered I have a couple of cute, whimsical bee picks that I want to add into this wreath to really give it some extra whimsy. All right, let's get these guys glued down in and then this beauty will be finished. I sure hope you enjoyed creating with me today. If you did, friends, be sure to give this tutorial a thumbs up. It really helps my little channel to grow. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Happy crafting.